Hey everybody, this is Aquila, and this is not going to be a knitting related podcast, or episode I should say. This is going to be related to a fiber art, but just in a different way. I've never really sewn many things, so this is going to be really new to me too, uh, in general. I've sewn things, mostly hems on curtains and curtains and very simple pillowcases, but we're going to try something new today. So I hope you enjoy and follow along on this journey. And I understand if you're not here for this kind of content, then um, just stay tuned for other episodes. But I really appreciate anybody who wants to support and watch and, you know, the craziness that could ensue. <laughs> so um, one of our beloved community members who uh, is the host of the Hey Brownberry podcast, and that's Mars. She recently went to MAFA. I have my notes here so I could remember what that uh, is an acronym for. MAFA is the Mid-Atlantic Fiber Association Conference. So she went there and she did filming in all the different rooms where people were having classes, which is awesome. And I got super intrigued by many of the classes that she went and shown, but super intrigued by this because I've always wanted to try to sew an object that was wearable and I've tried in the past I failed miserably I don't know how to I, I, I know in time I could do better at sewing and reading patterns and cutting out pattern pieces and whatnot but this class was called the one yard shirt and I just thought I could possibly do that. So let me show you. This is just the front page. It's called the One Yard Minimalist Top by KZ C. Stevens, who is Karen Stevens. So I'm going to show you. It's just a black and white photo, so I apologize. I'll try to maybe insert a photo here of from her Instagram page. You can find her on Instagram, that designer. And it is a one yard top. So it has a square neckline. And the one thing about this is there's no waste. So you buy one yard of fabric and there's minimal waste, I should say. Not no waste. There's minimal waste. I haven't done this yet to know how much waste I'll have, but we'll find out. So the thing with this is, it is a, um, you can do this whole top without having a sewing machine. Now, you do the main seaming, so it's like four seams. Uh, with a sewing machine in the pattern, but you could do that by hand. I think in the class that they showed at MAFA, it was all hand done. I could be wrong about that, but you should watch the episode, um, Hey Brownberry, and she had two episodes. I don't remember which one the top was in, so I apologize. I'll try to remember and make that link down below. So it calls for like a linen, you need a drapey fabric, like a linen or a double gauze. So we, me and my friend went, we're supposed to be doing this together and um, that kind of fell through for today. So I'm gonna do a run through myself and that way uh, we're both not struggling together. So I feel like that that's gonna be the best way to handle this. Um, so uh, we went to Joann's and we purchased um, a yard of fabrics. So we were like, oh, we could mix and match. We could make the body panels one fabric and the shoulder panels another, or you do the whole top in the same fabric. There's a lot of, uh, if you follow the designer on Instagram, there's a hashtag that you can follow for this shirt and that people have made some amazing things. There's now also a uh, edited version you can download for this. This was $6, just to be clear, it was $6. I purchased it on her website. And there's a modification download for a sleeve. So you can make a little bit more of a sleeve. This this is really going to be a, a very minimal sleeve. So I pulled out a shirt to measure that I really like that to measure. And because the, depending on the size of your fabric um, is going to be dependent on your shirt size. Now you can uh, crop some of the fabric off so then you might have more waste because of that. Um, because fabric doesn't always come in the, like the bolts, because it says based on fabric that is 56 inches to 61 inches wide, um, because you're folding that in half and then it's half of the fabric width. So I pulled out a shirt. This is a shirt I really like. It's, uh, it was in the laundry, so apologize, it's wrinkled. 
but I just measured the length of this because that's the biggest concern I have. I'm not worried about the boxiness, I'm worried about the length. I, I don't want it to be super cropped, but I don't want it to really hang down really low either. I don't want it to be like a tunic top, although you could. You just buy more than one yard and then you have a tunicky top. And I think people have made those and dresses just buying more fabric. Sorry, shedding everywhere. This was 20, woo, 22 inches. So from the shoulder seam to the bottom was 22 inches, between 21 and a half and 22. So yeah, I have not measured my actual fabric yet, but it's a yard is the length that you're going by when you actually read the pattern. It's um, yard from this, so that's 36 inches, but you're cutting off some of it for the shoulder panels. So we bought um, my friend only bought double gauze, but I bought double gauze and a linen. So I bought this double gauze. Now this was more than a yard because when you go to Joann's and there's only the tiniest bit left, you can purchase what's left on the bolt of fabric and you get it at like 50% discount. So I think it would, ended up being like a yard and a quarter or something. So that's like four foot. So 48 inches, so I bought this. And then I bought this in case I wanted to do the mix and match so I could do shoulder seams or do the blue with the um, striped shoulder seams. I'm not sure what I'm doing yet. But these are both double gauze. The blue I did just get a yard because there was a lot left on the bolt. And then this is a linen, I forget what they called it, like a heathered linen. I have my receipt, I'll tell ya. They called this a the one was called quarry blue bubble gauze. The other one was called multicolor stripe bubble gauze. Um, oh, and it's 75% off the end of the bolt. So I only paid another like $4 for uh, the extra bits. So I could make a pocket or I could use it as scrap for another top. And the this is called Sierra Two-Tone Linen Blend. So there you go. So I'm gonna start working on this. I don't know how much I'll actually um, show because it is a paid for um, pattern. I don't wanna like give away all the sauce, <laughs> secrets of the sauce. And uh, yeah, I'm actually starting to get really nervous now because I'm gonna be cutting into fabric in just a minute and that makes me super nervous. Because even though I got these 30% um, off, it's still not super, like the linen blend was a $20 a yard. So this ended up being $11. But if I make one shirt for $11, I already have thread. And then you, for the hand stitching part, you're using um, embroidery floss. And I have a bunch of embroidery floss, although I did buy embroidery floss for this project. Mostly because I want, I have a bunch for that I know I can pick from for the gauze, but <laughs> for this, I wanted to have something um, similar and I didn't know what I had at home. So I bought both a cream and like a pink. Uh, the bubble stripe, the bubble gauze, they were both $15.99, $15 a yard, and I ended up getting them uh, much cheaper for $8.39 after the 30%. Oh, and the end of bolt, it was only a half of a yard left. So I ended up getting that with all the re discounts um, for $1.38 for an extra um, half a yard. So I thought that wasn't too bad. So if I can get two shirts out of uh, the price I paid, let's just say it's about $20, nope, sorry, $30, and I get three shirts. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. I'll take it. Um, so yeah, let's get this going.
So I cut my body pieces and I did make them shorter because I don't, this is even a little long. It's in my crotch. Um, and I gotta account for a little bit of fabric here. It might just get hemmed again, not sure, but I did cut it already. But when I was cutting my pieces, well, first off, I already had major, I, I get so hyper fixated and then I cut the wrong thing. <sighs> it's fine, it's totally fine. This is the fronts and backs, but I didn't want my side pieces to go the same direction, like going over the shoulder. So I cut two new pieces. Luckily I had a ton of this fabric left and I'm going to have my shoulder pieces going in this direction. So it'll be opposite. All right. Next is just the hand, uh, the machine sewing a little bit of base stitching and then doing it. Yeah. Okay, again, I don't know any of this stuff. <laughs> Yay. Fun times. Just running a basting stitch through before I go back and do the rest of my machine sewing. Which, there we go. And I guess I can just leave that length out. It doesn't matter as long as it doesn't come out. Ugh, never really done this before, so. This is, this is very new. Um, I mean, I'd seen it in patterns before, but I've never done it, so. Um, it says it's recommended to do this part first. It's also recommended to do the decorative seaming, but I think I'm gonna wait to do the decorative seaming. I wanna get my machine, be able to put my machine away, or at least clean up this table a little bit. <laughs> So we're just gonna do the hand basting now so I can do the side seams. These are just all the shoulder seams. Um, so just to hold them down, cause I did press them open already. I didn't show that. Sorry if you hear Hazel's video in the background, it's very loud figure as long as it holds it down enough, right? That's the whole point. So, all right, do the other side and then I can machine do the edges, the, the side seams. Okay, so I hand, I folded the neckline down and pressed it and it said to just do a hand basting stitch. So I've done that on all of those and then you um, do your decorative stitching, which is all by hand, but that's just to hold the seams down. So that's where I'm at right now. 
Oh, no, I'm actually on the next step. So I have my sides pinned together and I'm doing a basting stitch on that so I can try it on to see if I like the length, which I think it's gonna be long. So we'll probably do some trimming, but there we go. That's where we're at. So I'm gonna do some hand basting um, right now. I'm kind of regretting the stripes. I kind of feel like I should have cut it so the stripes went this way. I feel like I'm wearing a kitchen towel right now. That's where we're at. Um, the neckline is a little wide. I don't love it. Uh, but, I mean, the fit isn't bad. The fit's not bad. It definitely needs to be shorter. Um, yeah. It's way too long. My, my shorts line is here. I want it to be like... Put it at the next yellow or or even shorter than that because um, if I pull my pants up where I would wear my linen pants which is belly button I'm thinking pink stripe that's that's kind of what I'm thinking oh man I'm regretting the stripes for the body Should I do a high-low hem? If I cut it right below the pink here, just do the under. And the armholes are okay. They're not showing too much. Also, a lot of body issues, you know, in general. I think I have fuzz in my hair. That's fun. Okay. <laughs> Let's just do it. <laughs> but I'm, I am going to cut it. Uh, my pants. Uh, maybe I should try it on with my linen pants. I might not do that on camera. But yeah. Maybe that's. I think it needs to be shorter. I think it needs to be below the blue. And then below the yellow in the back. That's what I'm going to do. Blue and yellow. We're doing it. All right, so here is where I'm at. I have done all the machine sewing, which is only a few pieces. Um, I've, I, sorry, I folded it over and I pressed it, but I'm holding it with the clips because I don't know. Maybe I should do those first with the hand um, part. Sorry, that one like fell in there, so it looks funny, but I ended up cutting it way shorter and I did a high-low hem. So that's where I'm at. Now it's all just taking your time and doing your hand sewing on it. This is like the slow down process of, of it all. Like when I watch Mars from Hey Brownberry. She is very mindful of what she's doing, mindful of her makes, slowing down, and I would just really enjoy watching her videos. If you haven't watched her videos, I really highly encourage it. I know I've talked about her a lot, but she's the one that showed me this pattern, and I know um, there's a lot of people out there that do slow down and do... It's not a race, right? We want to have pieces in our wardrobe that we absolutely love. So I really did take the time to line up when I did this, line up my stripes because I wanted them to be not um, off. I did pretty good. There's a few spots like this pink one, but I was very mindful of doing that. So that's where we at. we're at, and I just wanted to show you guys, so I'm going to sit and do some embroidery. I guess it's sewing, but you're using embroidery thread, so it always <laughs> switches up in my head. This fabric is already very, not busy, but I feel like it's a lot going on already. I know it's just stripes, but in my head it's already a lot, so 
I'm looking at my threads, I have this whole extra bag that's just not even in here. And I honestly am drawn to going with white or cream. I don't think I have enough of this though. And I think it's, it just looks dirty. Okay, so that's out. White is gonna get dirty. So, do I have enough of, nope, that's way off. I was thinking like a variegated, but if I do that, is that too much? Oh, I am really torn here. Let's open this bag. Don't use your teeth kids to do that. <laughs> I want to make sure I have enough. So let's see. Do I have enough of like that? That's pretty. I do have a whole nother thing of this one. Do I go with that? Then it's a little something something but not quite too much. Oh, maybe I like the I kind of like the yellow. Oh, I think I might do that. I can always take it out if I don't like it. Okay, let's do this. Okay, ready? It's not done yet, but I have side seams done, and the neck seam. That's all done. I just have to seam the armholes, the edges of the arm. Oh, I'm facing myself, duh. Uh, the armholes have to get hemmed, and that. But let's turn this around. So, I did a high-low, and I need to hem the bottom part yet, too. I don't like how big the neckline is open, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, it's a little wide for my liking, but it's not um, terrible. What do you think, Hayes? What do you think of it? Do you think it looks okay? I think it's really cute. You do? Uh, maybe like 8 out of 10? 8 out of 10? Alright, I'll take it. 8 out of 10. She said it needs a pocket, but I think because I cut it short, I'm worried about putting a pocket because the pocket's going to be like, whoop, way up here. I think it's going to be weird. It's yeah, definitely kind of cropped because my belly said, hangs out. I said 8 because I'd rather have like that, like arms that are like sleeves that can hang down and like pockets. I think the pockets would be really cute. Yeah, I'll have to, I can pin a pocket and see what it looks like. How about that? Yeah. Okay.
let's sit and talk about this top. I'm utilizing my daughter's room because, well, it's a rainy day today and her room has the best light right now. Okay, so top is done. If I don't add any pockets, which I don't think I'm going to do because I made it a little shorter than I think I wanted to, and um, I could add like embellishments, like I could add a little bit of extra cute embroidery, I could do something else. Um, am I going to? I don't know. Is it wearable now? Yes, it is. So at this point, I could wear it. Things I would do different next time. The neckline is too wide. I don't like it to be this wide. It's just my preference. Other people would like it. Uh, there is an option. There is in the pattern, it tells you how to make it a slimmer neckline. So next time I will do that. I have some notes here, so I remembered everything. Um, if you're new to ha having fabric, and I am newer. I'm not completely new to buying fabric or knowing about fabric. Um, I just don't use it enough and I also mostly buy or have in the past I've bought quilting cottons. Now quilt quilting cottons and cottons have a very distinctive selv selvage edge because it usually is printed with the name of what the fabric is etc. This after I looked at it I'm pretty sure the bolt of fabric went this way, so my shirt should have been, uh, the, the stripes should have went this way. So when I buy my next fabric, it's not going to matter so much for the fabric I have already, but when I buy a new fabric that's directional, I am going to make sure I check the selvage edge. If I can't really tell or if it's not super clear, I think the next time I'm going to mark it with a safety pin um, before I throw it in the wash and hopefully it doesn't like or mark it with something uh, I'm you know whatever just so I know which edge is the selvage edge um, most fabrics I don't think you'll have to do that but I feel like with this one it wasn't super clear so after I washed it I folded it the wrong direction so my selvage edges weren't together and then the fold was on the other side because that's how it tells you to lay it out when you cut your pieces. Totally okay though, it's, I'm not mad. I wish the stripes had went this way, but I actually really like that the stripes go that way on the sleeves. So it's a, it's a lose win, <laughs> I, whatever. Um, okay, so I would mark myself a judge just so I know I was like super clear on what edge. Uh, measure twice and cut once. That's a big one. That's a big one in a construction, doing uh, doing tile work, doing anything where you're cutting something. Yeah, you definitely want to measure twice and cut once because you can't really recut it unless you have to make it shorter. Uh, this wasn't so much a problem for me. I think my problem in the beginning was I didn't have it laid out the correct direction. So what happened was I measured thinking I had measured for three um, feet, which is one yard of fabric, because remember, this was the fabric I had extra of, and I should have been able to tell the difference, but I don't know what I did. I think I measured one direction, and then I refolded my fabric, and I measured, the, and then I cut, and then my three yards was like not 36 inches. I had cut like 38 inches or something somehow, so I ended up having to trim a little bit off. But then I trimmed a lot off anyway when I trimmed the length down on this shirt because I didn't like the length of it. And you guys had seen that in previous clips. <laughs> number uh, number three. Not, these aren't numbered. Uh, it's not a race. <laughs> um, granted, I don't have, I have a dedicated craft room and what I could have done was set up like a small table in there and done all my work in there. But I didn't and I moved because... I was going to have a friend over, so I thought a bigger space would be better. So I'd moved all my stuff up to another, to our kitchen, which of course you need to have your kitchen available to do other things. Um, so for me, I was kind of like, my family wasn't bugging me to get the stuff out of the way, but in my own head, I wanted to get it out of the way and be done. 
and I could have slowed down a little. So if you have a place that you can keep it set up for say uh, a whole, the whole day and not feel um, like pressure on yourself to get it done, it's not a race, it's not a race, it's not a race. It's not fast fashion. This is mindful making and slow fashion. So let's remember that part. Okay. <laughs> directional fabric. <laughs> um, buying directional fabric, I think, could be scary for people. Um, making sure when you sew the right pieces together that the they're going to line up the way you want them to and or the direction of the print is going to be the way you want it to. So um, don't be afraid to buy directional fabric, but also, again, be mindful when you buy directional fabric. I was very mindful when I cut my top. My front and back um, don't match. Oh yeah, they do. They are matching. I don't know if I... Well, it works out that way because of the way you cut the pieces. But uh, I made sure when I had cut the two sleeve pieces here that when I sewed this side on, the blue was here, and when I sewed this side on, I didn't have the blue over here, and I had the blue on this side because I wanted them to go in the same color direction. Just, that was that was me. Now, if it wasn't a directional fabric, and it was like the blue gauze I have downstairs, it wouldn't have mattered. <laughs> These are just things, I, like, I don't know if it's gonna be helpful or not. Uh, the neck hole slimmer, I already mentioned that. That's like my, my least favorite part of this is definitely the neckline. What, if I wanted to, I could add, um, I could get some fun trim or maybe some lace or something and I could add in like little panels. That would be fun. Um, am I going to? Probably not, but could I? Yes. Or I could even take some of the, some more of, of this fabric if I really wanted to and do some sort of like extra piece. I probably won't. Just saying but maybe, you never know. Uh, and then I did cut this, I thought I was cutting it where I wanted it to be, but I didn't account for the hemming. Uh, the hemming on this, I was thinking of like a smaller hem, but when you get to the directions, which I know I read all of the directions, but it didn't click when I was cutting it to think that I would had to account for a larger hem. It calls for a larger hem for the bottom. I didn't account for that, so my hem on the front you probably can't see is um, like my top of my thumbnail is the hem. It called, I hope I wasn't holding <laughs> The back hem is much longer, much wider, and that's okay. And I would have actually made it a real split hem. Um, this is the tiniest split hem probably in the, the universe, and that's totally okay. So, um, you can see there's really no hem at all. It's like, boop, that tiny piece. That's okay. Again, it's a wearable object. I don't hate it. I probably won't wear it all the time, but I did it. And now I can go forth and make others with the adjustments um, that I wanna do, that I would feel better with, etc. Um, I'm not going to probably put pockets on this because I did make it shorter and I feel like putting a pocket, my hand's going to be way up here trying to get into a pocket. So I feel like that would just be kind of like weird. I mean, I could do a um, top pocket, maybe there, maybe I'll do that and that could have some cute embellishments, embroidery on it. I don't know. I told you that I saw this um, the One Yard Minimalist Top. It was on the video from Mars of Hey Brown Berry, and I went and looked that up. It is part one, so I'll make sure that it is in here so you guys can go and link that too. It is further in the video, like it's past the halfway point. I don't know exactly the the time, but you could fast forward and find it um, there because there's like weaving and all kinds of different things, fiber prepping and whatever else because it is a fiber conference. Um, so it's in part one not part two, but I recommend watching both. So I just wanted to round this up because I am pretty happy and I am going to feel much more confident working 
and doing another shirt with my friend who has told me she's like I have like no garment making experience which I have had I have made I have made very few pieces that are wearable sewn garments and they were for like Halloween costumes so were they something that I I, I didn't put as much mindful, I didn't, I wasn't as mindful making it because I was like, it's Halloween, we're wearing it like twice. And yeah, so this piece, I wanted to be a piece that I would wear more, that what didn't have a bunch of mistakes, that didn't look like it was A, handmade, but B, didn't quite, I, I don't want it to always, I don't, like just with our knitting, like our making and crocheting and whatever else like if somebody said oh did you make that I would be like cool with them asking that because yeah I did and so there we are with that I just needed to round this up and put this up because I'm not gonna have a regular podcast episode this week sorry uh but I hope everybody's well I hope everybody's doing what makes them happy yeah this um I had a few frustrations just in general because I feel like it's very new to me and I get very like start sweating <laughs> start like not having like a panic attack and not totally freaking out but I definitely have those moments where I'm like oh, okay stop walk away come back um but yeah I did I this was um I did it, I worked on it all day yesterday, so I didn't do anything this morning, this was done yesterday, and so yes, it can be made in a one day thing. You also could have the hand, the machine sewing part done, and only have to do the hand embellishment stuff, which is great, because then you can only have, you could have your machine out if you don't have a de dedicated space, you could have it out for, you know, two hours, and then you'd be able to put it away, and be able to just do all the hand finishing, whether that's out by the pool, sitting on the couch watching TV, or laying in bed and watching a movie. So just be, uh, just so you guys have an idea of how, you know, time-wise uh, it took me. So there we go. I did end up going with, I don't think I mentioned, I ended up going with that variegated yellow thread. I, I don't think you can really tell unless you were like really examining the piece. Um, but I like that it's not like totally bold and standing out. I just didn't think like a, using a dark color against this beautiful pastel um, stripe would be as nice looking. So I opted for that um, more subtle look. Um, some of the tops you can find on Instagram have some really bold choices and I think they're beautiful. But for this, I just didn't want to do that. For other garments, maybe I will. Not quite sure. I guess you'll have to stay tuned to my channel here and or my Instagram pages and you guys can see them there. All right, I hope everybody's well and take care and peace, love and happy crafting. <laughs> Bye.